Um, as you've just heard, this meeting will be recorded um, and posted on the SIDW YouTube. Uh, if for some reason someone does not feel comfortable or does not consent to being recorded, um, please let one of us know. All right, great. So again, welcome. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I know for a lot of us on the, it is 12 o'clock. So thank you for joining us on your lunch hour when you could be doing a lot, a lot uh, of other things, but we definitely appreciate your participation, your time and looking forward to hearing more from you as we jump into meeting, planning meeting number two, of the newly formed SIDW work group, race, ethnicity, and diversity. Hopefully we're all in the same place. If anyone is in the wrong meeting, please stay and join us. Um, again, uh, this meeting is recorded. Uh, we also wanted to go over some other housekeeping items if we're gonna fill, share this space together, just making sure we're all on the same page. Um, not everyone feels like talking or using their video, that's fine. Don't feel pressure to put your video on. Um, also, if you don't feel like unmuting yourself, that's fine. That's why we have the chat function. Uh, so we will definitely be moderating that. Um, also look out for a survey that will be dropped into the chat. Um, it is a satisfaction survey and just to get your feedback on how today's meeting went. Um, also, please remember to unmute yourself when you speak and mute yourself all other times. I know this seems very basic, but we've all been on Zoom a lot and we've all, I'm sure, have either forgotten to unmute ourselves or forgot to mute ourselves. Um, let's respect each other. That's a big one, right? Like, don't yuck somebody's yum. As in don't, uh, if you disagree with something, that's great. That's the beauty in being human beings, our diversity. Um, but let's allow a space of um, open and honest discussion and a safe space that we make our own because this is, we are the working group. Uh, one mic as in, if a point comes up that you get really excited about, let's try to speak one at a time. It's a little bit easier in virtual meetings than in person meetings of not having people talk over each other, but we definitely wanna listen closely to what each person has to say uh, to make sure their opinions are recorded and um, accounted for. Step up, step back. So if you're somebody who usually talks a lot and can sometimes take up a lot of quote unquote space, maybe waiting a few minutes to allow others who may be a bit more timid to provide comment or feedback before jumping into the space with your ideas. But we do wanna hear all of your ideas, so please active participation is what we're after. Um, try it out. So trying something new. So if you're someone who usually has video off in the background, just listening, maybe try to be a bit more active um, for this meeting. So those are some basic housekeeping items we came up with. Are there any that any participant would like to add at this point before we move forward? I'm looking for hands, I don't see any, all right. So just, we have a very, I know we have set aside an hour and a half, but we have a very straightforward brief agenda uh, to discuss with you all today. We're going to figure out who's in the room, uh, introductions. We're going to do a brief overview about what the race, ethnicity and diversity work group is about and is not about. Um, we're gonna explore some topics and events, uh, some of which were discussed in our initial work group meeting in April others of which uh, Willem and I have come up with in speaking with other uh, people. And then we're always going to conclude it as a good meeting should with some next steps. All right, so I'm going to take a break from talking for a minute to get to know uh, who all is in the room. So can you all do me a favor and raise your virtual hands because that's just the cleanest way I think to give role. Um, also, if you want to stretch, again, I know it's the afternoon <laughs> for some of us. So if you want to raise your hands just to stretch, that's great. Um, but if everyone can raise their hands right now, and as I call your name to introduce yourself, you can put your hat hand down. 
I know that's an extra step, but it, in my mind, it's an easy way to make sure I get through everyone without forgetting people. Um, okay, again, please make sure to raise your hand virtually. I see a lot of people do not have their virtual hands raised. The purpose of doing this is to introduce yourself to the group. So it would be great if everyone could introduce themselves. All right, so how we're going to introduce ourselves just briefly, your names, if you feel comfortable sharing your pronouns, um, what organization you're affiliated with, uh, where you're based, which can be separate than where your employer is headquartered, and your favorite pandemic snack. <laughs> this is random, but I was in a training a few weeks ago and I really love this soft approach to looking at the pandemic. Um, because I already knew the questions, I'm going to start first. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, depending on where you're joining from. My name is Quisha Bradley. I am the program development manager with Meharry Medical College and their strategic initiatives and innovations program. They're based in Nashville, Tennessee. However, I live and work remotely from Washington, DC. And my favorite pandemic snack has been plantain chips. Like they just make me feel a little bit healthier than regular chips, but very tasty. Okay, with that, I'm just going to go to the first hand. Carolyn Gilbert, if you could put your hand down and please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Carolyn. Um, I use she, her um, pronouns and I um, joined a small nonprofit called Population Media Center about three months ago. So I'm a independent member of SID. Um, but work for them and I am based in Vermont at the moment. And my favorite pandemic snack is this um, banana based ice cream that you can make with peanut butter and chocolate and it's pretty healthy because <laughs> it has bananas in it. So um, I can eat a lot of it. So that's what's been nice for me. I love it. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Uh, next we'll go to Amy Chase. If you can please put your hand down and introduce. I feel like a game show host. Join us, Amy Chase. Um, I love the introduction, thank you. Um, so my name is Amy, I pronounce her she and her. Um, I am a project manager too at Encompass, uh, which is based in Rockville, Maryland. Um, I'm a project manager uh, too on the uh, gender uh, programs. And I am also the co-chair for SID W's um, independent uh, consulting network uh, group, uh, one of the working groups. Uh, where you're based, I am um, based out of my home in Arlington. Um, so yeah, I'm not looking forward to that commute to, uh, to Rockville uh, when we have to go back to the office. Uh, fair pandemic snack, I have to say um, the skinny dipped almonds. Uh, if you guys haven't try them, go look for a CVS or Harris Peter. Uh, my cousin gave me a bag um, uh, during the pandemic as, as a part of my birthday present because she knows I love chocolate. And these are basically chocolate covered almonds uh, with a um, little less chocolate coating. So it just feels a little bit healthier. I dig it. Thanks for the tip, Amy. Um, next, we'll go to Swati Sadapal, please, if you could put your hand down and introduce yourself. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Swati Sadafal and my pronouns are he, she or her. And I am a senior technical advisor at University Research Corporation, URC, which is based in Chevy Chase, Maryland. And I am based in DC area. And I would say my favorite pandemic snack is ice cream. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'll uh, call Meg Weaver. If you can put your hand down and introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Meg Weaver. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I work for ACDI VOCA, which is headquartered in Washington, although I am based in, in Pennsylvania. And my favorite pandemic snack, I would say it's just my classic. I just love hummus so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretzels and hummus, it, 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 I never tire of that. So uh, yeah, it's great to be here, everyone. Thanks so much, Meg. Uh, next, we'll call Stacy Terrell, if you could put your hand down and introduce yourself. 
And Meg, just a reminder, if you can put your hand down so I won't call on you again. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacy Terrell. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, currently, I uh, work for the Public Health Institute, um, and I serve as a diversity inclusion manager for um, a global health program uh, funded by USAID. I'm based in the Washington DC area. Um, and the first snack that I thought of was actually also plantain chips. I can knock out a bag very easily. <laughs> I have to watch myself, but it does feel healthier than regular chips in my mind. We should look into that if they actually are healthier, if it's just the psychosocial <laughs> effect of it's plantain you know. versus potato. <laughs> Feels healthier. Right, thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Alexandra and Dara. If you could put your hand down and introduce yourself, please. You're on mute. Oh, you can't. Oh, do you want to put it in the chat or do you want to try to reconnect for your audio? Reconnect. Okay. Uh, so as we wait for Alexandra to come back with the audio, we'll go to Delaney Smith. Hi everybody, um, I'm Delaney Smith. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm actually currently on the border of Vermont and Canada. Um, and I'm currently serving as the intern for the DEI Coalition Task Force at Interaction. And I would say that my favorite pandemic snack has been grilled cheese only because it's the only thing I know how to cook. <laughs> yes. Can't go wrong with the classic. Thank you and welcome. Uh, next, I'll go to Betsy Burry, if you could please put your hand down and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Betsy Burry. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a practice area leader for the M&E practice at um, Management Systems International, which is based in Arlington, Virginia. And I personally work from home in Crofton, Maryland, near Annapolis. Um, my favorite pandemic snack is chips and hummus. I dig it, thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Tarub Farah. I can't see the rest of your last name, but we'll go to Tarub. If you can please put your hand down and introduce yourself, please. Oh, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tarub Faramand. I am the president of Why Her Women Influencing Health Education and the Rule of Law. I am based currently in Florida temporarily because my grandkids are here, so I'm here to be with them. Uh, but our office is in Virginia. And my favorite pandemic snack is I learned to uh, make a Middle Eastern sweet called Qatayef. It's like a pancake, you stuff it with, it's a special dough like a pancake, you stuff it with uh, walnuts, cinnamon, and all the goodies. And then you fry it with butter and then you put some syrup on it. So you can imagine how delicious this is. That sounds good. Can, it, can you write that in the chat so I can Google it later? I'm just not sure how to spell it. Yes. But that would be great. Thank you. Um, next, we will go to Lauren Reese. If you can put your virtual hand down and introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lauren Reese, and I am a re I work with DAI. Um, and I work on a, the regional program manager for the USA Community Strengthening Project in Myanmar, um, but I'm currently in Raleigh, North Carolina. And my favorite pandemic snack has been olives because I've somehow convinced myself they're kind of a vegetable because they're green sometimes, but <laughs> it's all an illusion. <laughs> Thanks everyone, good to be with you all. Thank you, Lauren. I love the stories we've been telling ourselves in the pandemic, which is important to be gentle with ourselves and get through the days how we get through them. Um, next, we'll go to Quita Keller. If you could put your hand down and please introduce yourself. Hi there, it's actually Kita. This is Kita Keller and my pronouns are she and her. And I am the Outreach Partnership and Internship Specialist for Chemonics. I am currently working and have been uh, since the pandemic started in Howard County, Maryland, and will return to the physical space when our building is complete in Navy Yards in Washington, DC. And favorite snack, I ate just about everything during the pandemic, but I think my 
my my favorite was a mix of cashews and um, pistachios. Thank you. And apologies about the mispronunciation. No this worries. I fight every day to tell people my Q U is qua. So to meet your Q U with the K, I'm like Kita. But okay, I will not forget that. Thank you. Also, I love the themes. We have some some nuts, some almonds, some pistachios, cashews, some hummus. A lot of salty things. Um, next, we'll go to Virginia Berger. If you could please put your hand down and introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Virginia. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I work at the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, which is based in DC. Um, I am also in DC, just currently working from home. Um, and my pandemic snack would probably be Chipotle, although I think that's pushing it by definition of a snack. So if that doesn't count, maybe I would say just the chips and guacamole from Chipotle. I've been getting a lot of business out of me this year. <laughs> Thank you. Everything counts, Virginia. Again, we're being gentle with ourselves. <laughs> and you got a hand clap from Alexandra. So good. Alexandra, are you back on to introduce yourself? I think so. Perfect, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Awesome. Uh, my name is Alexandra Ndara. Um, I pronounce it she, her. Sorry about the um, not being able to speak before, you know, tech. Um, I am with the Institute of Inequalities and Global Health. I was with the World Bank uh, doing implementation and development of projects for six years before this. I'm based in DC, but right now I'm in uh, California. So it's um, nine something AM around here. And my favorite snack, although it's just my favorite snack ever, is lime lays. Not as healthy, but I just love them. Limeade? What did you L say? Lime lays. Oh, lime lays. <laughs> yeah. So it's, again, it, they don't need to be pandemic healthy snack. Just I eat them with salad. So, you know, healthy. Yeah. Good balance. Good balance. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, so next we are going to go to someone I'm very, 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 very happy to introduce. That's a little drum roll. Because for those of you, and I do recognize some of the names and faces from our first meeting in April. So for those of you who joined us a few months ago, at that time, I was the only co-chair. So I am beyond excited to uh, introduce the official other co-chair of, of our work group, Willem. So Willem's the only one who is allowed to go off script with the introductions. You can definitely provide a little bit more background before we move over to Sid's staff for introductions. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you, Quisha. Uh, folks, good afternoon. My name is Willem van Niekerk. I am the co-chair, as uh, Quisha has said of the, this work group, and it is a true pleasure and honor to be with you today. A uh, little bit about myself, my pronouns are he and him. I am currently employed as a management consultant specializing in global health, uh, as well as virology, um, specifically on the African continent for a management consulting firm called Intellectual Concepts, and we're based out in Atlanta. Yet I reside in the District of Columbia in DC itself, and uh, this is where I work from. <clears throat> My career has taken me from big pharmaceuticals for a decade, where I worked all across the continent of Africa in the HIV pandemic, as well as malaria and tuberculosis to a certain degree. And about seven years ago, I started consulting and I have consulted in women's health, reproductive health, um, again, virology, logistics and supply chain facilitation, redesign, getting drugs from the manufacturer to the last mile health, um, et cetera, et cetera. The biggest part of my responsibilities currently is to expand um, my employer's footprint on the African continent and work with multilateral agencies such as USAID. Uh, I don't have a specific pandemic snack, but after hours, I have been hitting the hard seltzers. So that's one of the things that I've been trying to find out what uh, what would be nice. So that that is pretty much it. Uh, Quisha and I have uh, met prior to me being a coacher and uh, when things were still on the circuit. And it's a real uh, pleasure for me to be part of this group, bring a little bit of, of my expertise and my point of view. Um, I am was born and raised in South Africa. 
Um, and as most of you would rightly know, um, after 1994, the country had a very rapid change and all of a sudden more than a hundred years of racial divide had to be overcome um, also in the workplace i entered the workforce in 2005 and it was at that time when equity um, diversity inclusion was very much at the forefront and in south africa it was not just the nice to have it was legally mandated so employers were scrambling we saw some really interesting good things also not so good things what, what happened, and I do believe that I can bring a fairly unique viewpoint in terms of what it means when we discuss these, uh, these very weighty items and uh, subjects. So that being said, this is me. I'm glad to be here. If any of you want to connect, I'd be happy to do that. And I'll uh, let Quisha take us forward. Thanks so much, Willem. Uh, with that, Paul, I will kick it over to you for a brief introduction, um, and then each of the CIDW staff can popcorn it to each other. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, it's great to see all of you here and great to see some of you from last time. Um, as some of you may know, my name is Paul Sherman and I'm the Director of Programs for CIDW. So I help uh, on the logistics side uh, for all of the events that we do. So excited, as I said, excited to see everybody here. Um, and uh, nothing else to really add to that, uh, but I'll just let my the rest of the CW team uh, take it from here and introduce themselves, uh, maybe perhaps starting with Pebbles. Favorite pandemic snack, Paul? I don't really have one. I'm not a snack person. Noted. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Um, hi, everyone. I don't typically get to introduce myself because I'm behind the SID account, but great to see you all. I'm Pebble Sadaez. I'm the membership and external affairs manager here at SID Washington. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently based in DC, but I'm originally from the Philippines. And over the pandemic, I have been snacking a lot. I would say probably my favorite one would be chocolate covered pretzels, followed closely by cheese just cheese in general. I will pass it to Jamal. All right, and also say too, I forgot to say, I use he, him pronouns. Thanks Pebbles and Paul. Um, I'm Jamal, I'm the events administration coordinator at CID, um, based in DC as well. And favorite pandemic snack, I would say mangoes. And I'll pass it to Ian. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ian. I use the he serious pronouns. Um, I'm an intern at CW and currently an undergraduate student at Tufts University. I'm currently based off Albany, New York. And favorite pandemic snack, probably uh, hummus and carrots or pretzels. And I'll pass it to Cairo. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cairo Lawrence. I am also an intern um, at CID Washington, and um, I'm currently a student at the University of Southern California, so based in LA right now. Um, and then I'd say my favorite pandemic snack would just be a nice smoothie, nice and refreshing. I'll pass it over to uh, Proby. Oh, sorry. And then I use uh, she, her, and her pronouns. Thanks, Cairo. Hi, everyone. I'm Proby. I use the she, her pronouns. Um, I'm currently an undergraduate at the University of California, Berkeley, but right now I'm based in DC. Um, I'm an intern with CW, and my favorite pandemic snack would be hot Cheetos. <laughs> and I think that's it. Thank you, Parobi. In safe space, it's okay. Has anyone not introduced themselves yet? Okay, well, thank you all very much. Again, it's interesting to see some similarities in our the snack palette that we had for the pandemic. Um, so now that we know who's in the room, let's do just a brief overview about who the race, ethnicity, and diversity work group is. Uh, so our purpose is really looking at international development um, and address how systemic racism, colonization, and ethnic discrimination affects and forms uh, historically created our work, right? It's very important to note our work group provides a forum for us to discuss and address these issues, uh, we don't advocate for anything. 
Um, we are a neutral convener. Um, the work group also uh, helps international development professionals gain the necessary information, tools, and resources to ameliorate discriminatory practices around race, ethnicity, and culture um, around the world. So any questions on the work group before we move forward? Okay. So internally, uh, what have we been up to since we last met in April? Again, uh, we brought on Willem, so happy that we are fully co-chaired up in the work group. Uh, we've also been having phone calls and meeting with people. Even though we're the newest work group, this work is not new, right? And Sid W has actually um, covered some aspects that we can also cover under other work groups. For example, the Young Professionals and Development Network, we had a call with them because a lot of their programming, past and present, uh, covers some issues around race, ethnicity, and diversity. The same with the Gender and Inclusive uh, Development Work Group. Um, we also met with Lauren, who's on the call, and some other DAI Diversity Affinity Group uh, representatives. And again, the purpose of these calls was really, there's synergies left and right. So it's really about Willem and I reaching out to people saying, let's keep this conversation going and let's figure out how to work together or figure out how to not duplicate efforts or even to enhance and grow what we're each trying to do. Um, also what Willem and I uh, worked on was shortlisting some of the ideas that came out of our April meeting. And that's mainly what we'll be covering today. Some of the uh, common ideas that came out of our phone calls, but also the original ideas and interests uh, those of you who were in our initial meeting had. Hi, Amy. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Uh, so where are we? <laughs> we are the shortlisted ideas. And again, right now I'm just, the next two slides are just the shortlisted ideas or the direction in which we're flowing as the work group. And then we will open up the space for you all to provide question, comment, concern, places to add, any of that good stuff. Um, so one event we are definitely a go for uh, to do is in collaboration with the Gender and Inclusive Development Work Group. And this virtual event will generally be titled, What does diversity, equity, and inclusion mean to the international development community? And why is it important? Um, so there's a lot that we can chop up with that topic, but we knew that's where we wanted to start. Um, and then as we develop that out, we'll definitely be bringing forth some maybe lesser known or non-traditional uh, speakers or panelists to really present uh, on that topic. Another idea, and that's the only like definite event, virtual event topic that we have set in stone. Philem, I see you going on mute. Do you have something to add? Uh, no, Quisha, okay. um, not particularly. Okay. Um, so something else that was discussed amongst this group was actually talking about a way to create some kind of pipeline or pathway to increase diversity um, in international development via studies and actual career paths. Um, because it's not just when you get to the office or when you get to the corner office that you notice there's a diversity problem that needs to that pathway needs to start somewhere and it needs to be reinforced and guided and protected um, so something that this group could choose to explore more is this idea of some sort of pathway uh, to increase diversity in the field um, something else that came out i know Willem and i we talk about this often but figuring out a way for this work group to really highlight or uh, in some programming centering the non-traditional voices, right? So truly international um, as it relates to language accessibility. So bringing in interpreters if needed to make sure we hear the stories uh, from uh, non-native English speakers um, or a, uh, having interpreters if ASL is needed. Um, but really breaking new barriers to have to center in a voice that isn't often heard. 
So voices beyond the quote unquote West, voices beyond the quote unquote global North. So again, it's up to us how, what shape or what form that takes, but that's something that has clearly come out um, in all of the, our meetings. Um, something else that's been very clear since our initial April meeting, but in subsequent calls is the role of language, right? So decolonizing, examining, the words we put in proposals, the words we use in reports, how we speak to each other, our lingo, our concepts, our phrases. Um, and this is also to be determined. Do we want, um, I know some of you are working on language guides within your organizations um, or trying to re reimagine what certain words look like. So this work group could choose to do something written, whether that's a paper, a blog post, or to have an actual virtual event on this idea about decolonizing and really looking at the language we use in international development. Um, something else that's been requested from you all, those who were involved in the first meeting, is to have practical workshops on professional bias, institutional racism, um, and not just talking about race, ethnicity, diversity, in the sense of theory, but really translating that into what can be done in the office, what can be done day to day with yourself. Um, and a question mark on if this would be focused for HR professionals or uh, certain departments or people within the work setting, or if it would just be a brown bag, something that's open uh, that this work group puts on for others to uh, take participate in. Last but not least, the overarching theme of just creating a hub to highlight um, and connect with lived experiences that we all have. The people, I don't know how many people are on this call, but all 21 of us, right? So how do we connect? How do we highlight? How do we exchange our lived experiences? How do we foster and create a safe space uh, to do the work within this work group? So that, and I can go back a slide if, if you all need to re-review again, but those are the main kind of six points that we're, we're working with right now. So at this time, I will be quiet and allow, uh, if anyone wants to add to what I said, Villa or Paul um, or even Lauren, um, or if anyone just has any questions or comments or other things to add into the discussion. Thank you, Quisha. Let me um, jump into something because I've been doing a bit of research and reading and something that I think could also bring us a better understanding is exactly in the context of global development and especially obviously my field is global health. Um, how do we approach these things? Because it is certain, I mean, in the field of global health and global development, there is an unfair power balance. Um, donors yield the most of the money. Um, the people who actually need the money has the least voice. So um, donors often depend, or, or um, the uh, receivers of, of donations often depends on the donors and what their agenda is, where the money flows, who gets funded, who gets not. So something like that, a large amount of money and power um, also flows to high income countries. We see this often in development where all of the experts come from the global north, um, experts from the global south, um, especially the African continent and Southeast Asia, struggle to get a visa to come to MIT or to Harvard for a conference uh, because of uh, uh, essentially the difficulties around visa, uh, visa regulations, et cetera, et cetera. So something that's been piquing my interest is essentially how do we change this dynamic, especially in global development, when we think about who gets the money, who doesn't, and where does the power exchange actually lie? Because ultimately, the folks who need it most are not getting it. And something that I've seen that USAID has been doing is cultivating the knowledge of what they now call indigenous implementation partners. Because very often when I lived in South Africa, worked for an American company, worked with multilaterals, I would often work with folks 
that um, are always outside of the country. You have very few in-country experts. What I've seen USAID is doing now is trying to transfer the knowledge to local folks and they don't just fly in, fly out, and there's no knowledge remaining. So that's something that I would like to explore a little bit further. Perhaps we can roll this into some of the other things that we um, will discuss or one of the events that we do, but essentially, long story short, global development specifically, how, how does this impact? How does race, equity and inclusion and diversity, especially in the global health, uh, global health and development context, how does that work? Thank you so much, Philip. As a business development person, I dig it. I love it. Uh, but I definitely want to hear from others on your on the point you just raised, as well as the the points we covered at the slide. Uh, Lauren, I see your hand up. I'll go to you. Yeah, I have a, a separate comment, not to what Willem said. So if anyone else um, wants to to respond directly to that, I'm happy to wait. Okay, if not, I was, uh, thank you for putting this together and many of the points that you shared kind of echoes what my colleagues and I who've been working on racial and social justice initiative at DAI have um, had on our minds. Um, uh, just one thought for the, the initial activity um, with the gender and inclusive development working group about what DEI means to development. Um, I, I, I imagine that many of our organizations have been having this conversation over the past year um, and, and you know, trying to make the case internally for DEI strategies. Um, so I wonder if there could be a component of this or maybe uh, an activity more related to creating a, a kind of a knowledge hub uh, related to a form where all of those of us working in DEI at different development organizations or participating in uh, affinity groups or employee resource groups could do some sharing and discussion about what has been working, what hasn't been working, what are some of the roadblocks to trying to um, uh, um, demonstrate the value of DEI uh, for international development. Um, because uh, I think, you know, many of us are working on similar efforts uh, in different organizations, and I and I definitely think that um, this could be, Sid, and this working group could be a great forum for that collaboration. So I would love, um, I'm definitely pro um, the ideas focused on practical uh, workshops. So how do we take these, comp these uh, ideas about what DEI means for development and then start talking about what that means in terms of process and systemic change? Um, uh, so that's one of my two cents. Thanks. Thank you, Lauren. And also want to highlight the comment Virginia put in the chat um, of loving that um, as someone who participates in an affinity group as well. Um, I saw Betsy's hand up and I'll go over to you, Alexandra. Hi, this is Betsy Bury. Um, I wanted to sort of piggyback on what um, Willem was saying about the larger structural issues in the industry as a whole and the power dynamics. One of the places I see that play out so much is in the salaries that we pay for development projects. And Westerners, Northerners who are going in as expats to these countries get paid uh, according to expat salaries and local staff get paid according to what you said calls their local compensation plans. And so you can have people doing almost the exact same job or the exact same job getting paid multiples, like two or three times as much just because they uh, come from the global north. And I think that that is a look that I don't like in our industry. And I really struggle with how the industry should be talking about that and whether the industry should be doing something to change that. Thank you, Betsy, so much. And I put yikes in the chat because it's so true, but it's one of those things where it's like, yes, <laughs> yes. And these are the types of ideas and discussions we want, like whether we'll see how it manifests, but we, we always want this to be a safe space and a space where we can just be real with each other. Like we all know the flaws in our industry, but how do we talk about that? How do we highlight that? 
in a way that's productive, right? And in a way that, again, that neutral convener piece. So thank you for sharing, Betsy. Uh, Alexandra? Hi again, so this is um, a question going back to that, what DEI means to uh, development. And maybe you guys have discussed this before. It is my first time uh, joining the, the group, but I was wondering, it makes total sense, big picture, but I was wondering if there is a focus on like what it means in each department, what it means as an, organ means as an organization in terms of hiring, what a DEI means when going back to language, right? When we talk about quote unquote beneficiaries or how we should talk about, uh, you know, the final client It's like, what focus do you think this big event should have? Because I totally get the big picture, but I, at the same time, I think it would be nice to narrow it down to see if it is organization-based or how we actually uh, implement our work uh, on the ground. Agreed, and I can tell you full disclosure, because we just agreed to this last week, we have it, we were waiting to have this call prior to circling back with the gender and inclusive development work group to further flesh out those details. So more to come on what this could look like, but you're absolutely right. And Paul, I should know this, but I'm, I don't, I'm unsure on as we decide on events and topics to cover, how involved certain work group members could be. So for example, uh, as Willem and I go back to the gender and inclusive development work group co-chairs to further discuss this, if say Alexandra is very excited to help us really drill down on what this event could look like, is that an option? Paul or anybody from CIDW? Because Willem and I are also like, we're new co-chairs, so. All right, maybe we'll give Paul a moment or I'll circle back after the fact, but thank you, Alexandra. Uh, Betsy, did you have another comment? I see your hands raised. Sorry, I forgot to put it down. That's my bad. Sorry. No problem. Um, I also want to highlight da, 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 looking at Lauren's comment in the chat. Okay, no worries. I'll just I'll email him offline after this or see when he comes back. Thank you. All right. So what else? There we there's 21 of us. We We've heard from some of us, but not all. So again, it could be reactions or responses or critiques to what you've read on the slides or heard thus far or points you would like to definitely vote for or highlight or push to make sure it gets into our limited um, program schedule. And by limited program schedule, uh, I believe we're on point for two events uh maybe two to three events over our tenure as co-chair and again we have two years so i know we're starting a bit late in 2021 but Willem and i will be your trusted co-chairs through 2023 so there's time but we really really wanted to take time to hear and listen uh to ideas you all have yeah quisha i'd like to uh, add two cents of that um Folks, for everybody that's on the call, we are very excited to do this, but yes, we work in the parameters of CIDW. So if we're lucky, we can do three events, but more realistically, it will be two. There's an enormous amount of resources that CIDW provides for us. And we as a work group also, I would not say compete, but we also have to coexist with all the other work groups. So Paul has made it very clear to us that we need to try and distill what we want to do as best we can. So it is important for us to, to, to try and take your comment, not to try, to take your comment and try and shape two events that can be as inclusive and address the majority of the subjects discussed, because it is not um, realistic for us to think that we're going to have five, six 
different events and oh we can touch on this and we can do that etc cetera, etc cetera. so just to reiterate that we are limited in what we can do hence the casting of a wide net in order to uh to develop the the two best events that uh, that, that we can do Sorry, I'm back. My Wi-Fi just went out for a second, so I missed what uh, was said. I just saw that Pebbles put something in the chat about me being away. No worries. It was just a quick question on work group member participation uh, and how involved they can be in conversations that co-chairs have in planning a virtual event. Uh, that's up to the both of you really um yeah there, there's nothing else to it yeah it, it, other work groups haven't enlisted the help of uh their respective members to well not members those who are interested in the work group to put events together bring in speakers uh those types of tasks so that's how it's typically work worked though at the end of the day the work group coaches are the ones who and cw staff still obviously need to sign off on whatever Hap, whatever comes of uh, any discussions, but uh, long story short is there can be, yes, there can be some involvement from those who are on this call or those who are not even on this call. Great, thank you so much. What else work group? Alexandra? Yeah, so a random, not well-developed idea yet, but I was wondering if um, there was a chance to do the truly international webinar with Voices Beyond the West. Uh, maybe if there could be a focus on what uh, you talked about before, which is this knowledge exchange programs where you actually go and train people on the ground. I wonder if you know those are the voices that you could bring to this, uh, let's call it conference, to see what they've learned from these experiences what they would improve, and also, and most importantly, what we would learn from them. Thank you. We're definitely taking notes. And I love a good random undeveloped idea, so it's fine. It's, again, it's a safe space. We're brainstorming. Like, this is the idea, so it catches Willem and I's ear, so we remember when we have future conversations to sprinkle this in. Oh, absolutely, quite so. I'll leave the floor open for a few more minutes if anyone had, again, any reactions, comments, questions, concerns. We should think, let me add to say this to the group that like me, probably you get a host of different email letters every morning or highlights, depending on what, what field you are in. If you see something interesting, if you are on DVEX, if you are on one of the UN um, newsletters, whatever it may be, if you see something interesting, please reach out to us and send it to us. Um, that is oftentimes what makes me think I see something that is quasi related to what I am doing. And then I start thinking to myself, because just as Alexandra mentioned now already, my mind is tied to two or three other things that I just read in the last week and thinking, oh, I know this expert or I know somebody that can speak more eloquently to this or that or the other. So it doesn't need to just be in this call, putting you on the spot saying, do you have a good idea? If you, if you come across something that you think would be worth our while, please feel free to share it with us and uh, we, would, we would definitely like to, uh, like to take it up, even if it's just a web link to an article and you, you, you say, look, saw this, thought about you guys and um, we, we would, uh, th this might be interesting. That's a great point. Thank you so much, Willem. And now that I know we have kind of free reign, if anything really, I don't know, I, I don't know, we'll talk about it, but I would also like to get involvement if possible and not a lot because we're all busy, we're all working professionals, but if anyone feels strongly about an event or a topic, I would love to uh, invite them in in some way. And again, we'll figure out how to, how best to do that 
Um, Dylan, before I forget, I think we should put our email addresses in the chat. I don't know if everyone has them. Um, but uh, Pervy, I see your hands up. Yeah, sorry. I've just been listening in. This is my first meeting and I didn't introduce myself because I was driving. I was intending to take this from my computer and life happened. Um, but uh, since I didn't introduce myself, my name is Purvi and I have been working in the last few years um, in the UN. I came back during COVID uh, to the US and for family reasons decided I should try to build my US aid networks out more. Um, but I can say that so from my perspective, like actually many of my networks are, are outside of the US and not in US based institutions. So this is where I feel very sort of lost and I just, just sort of listening to the conversation to see where everyone else is at. But I, I would say this to the suggestion is that I know in the last year, there have been a lot of, of exactly these discussions on topics of things like salary about how to promote equity between the, the global north and the global south terms of retention. I know another big topic is accountability mechanisms and whether or not they work in a lot of these multilateral institutions. My suggestion would be a lot of the times what happens on these events that I've seen, especially the virtual ones, is you get the same speakers asked to speak again and again, particularly from the global south. And I think one thing that would be useful for this group is maybe to get a resource list together of like other webinars or other articles that have taken like conversations that have taken place pretty robustly on the internet in the last year so that when when the group goes out especially as a, a very u.s based group it doesn't sound like we don't know those conversations and we kind of take a bit of time to educate ourselves before we try to sort of engage in the larger conversation that honestly has been happening quite a bit um in outside of u.s networks i think in the last year and a half i would say agreed and thank you for that addition. I hope you're driving safely. Yeah, actually, I just pulled over to say that much, and I'm going to keep going now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Lauren, I see your hands up. Yeah, the, thank you. Uh, and I second what uh, Pervy said, and I have bookmarked some existing, like, resource documents that have summarized a lot of articles um, related to um, decolonizing de development, um, inequality and racism and, and humanitarian practice and development, which I'll, I'll drop in the chat as well. Um, but just in maybe an effort to, to, to take some of the things that we haven't spoke about on this list um, and, and offer some thoughts um, for the pipeline to increase diversity and development. I know that's that's, so much discussion, at least within DAI, around um, recruitment and retention. And while I definitely see the benefit and and maybe doing some programming related to this as Sid W, I I always it's so impactful for these career development things to be connected with potential job opportunities. And if that's not something that that we could offer, or perhaps would be duplicative of some other work that Sid W. Like career fairs and things are doing that maybe um, uh, uh, our efforts as a working group would be best served elsewhere instead of on the recruitment and retention. That might, um, that's just just one thought. And then also with the language guides. Um, again, from my experience within uh, my organization, you know, we we've spent so much time trying to come up with common uh, language that uh, and it can be quite a process and and. Uh, for better, for worse, um, can can affect the timeline of making some of the changes necessary for, for DEI and inclusion. So um, while I think sharing those resources will be helpful, I, I'd be, um, uh, my first maybe hesitation or thought is how um, uh, creating guides or sharing those guides might um, detract us from some really useful um, organizing and collaboration and knowledge sharing that um, we could put, benefit from um, uh, across the industry. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for that feedback, Lauren. Bobby Jefferson, are you near? Uh, your computer right now. If so, I was going to ask you to briefly introduce yourself. Okay. 
Um, does anyone else have any, any other ideas or questions, comments, concerns? Again, this is the info gathering phase. So everything is on the table. <laughs> around I don't see anything okay Delaney I'm hesitant to mention this just because it's still in the preliminary phases but as we talk about um, creating career paths for people um, to diversify the sector we actually interaction is developing um, a fellowship program for mid-career professionals from underrepresented groups um, and so as as we kind of initiate that, it would be interesting to see if um, some of our members and some of your members would be interesting in either mentoring um, some of our cohorts or even, you know, contributing some of your own professionals to the program. So just to keep an eye out for that, um, we'll be kind of launching the program announcement pretty soon. Uh, I just want to put that in people's minds as we develop it. Thank you for sharing and definitely helpful. So it's good you didn't hesitate <laughs> and it's good you shared that with us. Thank you, Taro. All right, so Pervy, I just wanna check, is your hand up because you have something else to say? Um, so with that, again, we will take today's discussions, um, today's comments, ideas, uh, feedback, and continue to develop this out in planning our first event. <laughs> um, so yeah, touch points are, are not often with the work group. Um, it's actually rare for a CW work group to do two planning meetings. Usually it's one, then you get the ball rolling. But again, because we are a newer or the newest work group, and because there's just, this is a massive topic and there's so much that we could cover, we wanted to make sure that we at least heard basic ideas and where this group would like to start. Um, when something just came to the chat. Okay, good. Um, so I think I think I'm starting to get my head around where we are going, which is good path we were already on anyway. Um, and I know someone on CW staff is taking notes right now, so notes will be shared. Um, Alexandra, thank you for putting your email in the chat. Uh, I guess if anybody would like. Bill, let me know what you think about this. <laughs> Everyone else, give us a second. But if because it's up to us how we engage with our work group members, if anyone's really interested or already working on a topic or has something to contribute to a planning conversation, um, they should be allowed to flexibly reach out to one of us, say they're interested in some way. Does that make sense or do you want to? Yeah, Quisha, absolutely. Um, I think that's going to be the best way to to proceed with this. I also wanted to check, Paul, are you still on? I'm still here. Great. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to the LinkedIn group. I don't know if that's off the ground yet, but saying that for everyone that is on the call, there there should be a, a LinkedIn group that 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 should be in existence or come into existence fairly shortly. So that's another way for, uh, for us to interact with each other uh, um, more in a, in, a, in a more efficient way. Uh, the, yeah, so the, the inclusive development LinkedIn group is off the ground, um, still in the early stages. Um, so that is still a work in progress, uh, hoping that we can, you know, wait a little, you know, maybe wait towards the end of the summer, see how it plays out and then figure out what the, what, how we, how we could expand that moving forward. Okay. Um, so just to clarify for everyone, there is not a LinkedIn group yet for each work group 
Um, it's just for the inclusive development work group. It is a pilot. Uh, Quisha, thank you for posting it in the chat. Um, so please feel free to join it. Um, you'll see kind of what we're thinking of in terms of how like, what the co-chairs are doing. I know the co-chairs have a couple of posts in there already. Um, anyway, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I know it's because I, I think I see Delaney has her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. That's from before. My bad. <laughs> Okay, anyway, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Um, so just as Alexandra did, I guess if, and this is not mandatory at all, again, as we heard a few minutes ago from Paul, each co-chair does things a little bit differently, but if you do think he would be interested in sitting in for at least one plan, because we're probably not going to, like one planning meeting to discuss, here's the big picture idea of the topics, what specifically uh, can we put in there or what are some speakers or people you think would be good to be represented during this event? Uh, please put your email in the chat, whichever one uh, is best to reach out to you. And next steps from our end, um, as Willem and I, again, give us a few days, a few weeks <laughs> to take this all in, um, schedule some next steps, some other conversations um, and again, for those of you who put your email in the chat, we'll be in touch when those planning development uh, calls happen. Anything, so prior to concluding, I did want to open up space uh, to kind of do exactly what Delaney did. If there's anything related to race, ethnicity, diversity that you wanted to share, uh, just opening up the space to share it with persons in the uh, work group. But before I go to all of their business and announcements, are there any questions? Okay. Uh, so with that, our announcement I want to make. So there will be the Sid W uh, survey going in the chat again. Uh, please fill it out before you hop off if you can. Uh, that's it from my end. Any other announcements from anyone? Okay. I love an efficient meeting. Thank you all so much for your participation. And again, you could be anywhere in the world today, but you chose to spend the hour with us and we, we truly appreciate that. Um, and we look forward to working with you and making this work group as awesome as possible. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Have a nice Bye. afternoon.